y'all. Good morning. It's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. I'm so hungry this morning. So I decided I would make some biscuits and gravy and slice up some cantaloupe. And um, I'm going to get started. I'm going to do uh, something easy and use my favorite biscuit mix. This is Southern Biscuit Mix Formula L. I usually put in a scoop for every person, about a third cup. There's quite a few of us here, so I'll do five. With biscuit mix, you don't have to measure. You just put in a scoop per person. And then you add your buttermilk. You add your buttermilk a little bit at a time until all the mix, you don't have any flour left, um, clean to the bowl. It is in a red and white bag. It's called Southern Biscuit Mix, and it's only in the South. It's way better than Bisquick. It's really like a homemade biscuit. Southeastern Mills makes a pretty good one, too, if you can find their biscuit mix. Yours is usually in little pouches. Today, I'm going to make big biscuits because we're going to have biscuits and gravy. As we'll put it on. And with any biscuit mix, you're just going to put your flour out on the counter. and kneaded about seven or eight times. I'm gonna take a little shortening, put in my pan. These are huge biscuits. This is a Pampered Chef biscuit cutter. I'm talking quietly because it's morning and I don't want to wake everybody up. These are huge. One biscuit ought to be enough per person as big as these are. Right here. Oh, my last biscuit. I'll just roll it. It's huge. I'm some big old biscuits. And I'm not going to pat them today with buttermilk. We're going to get these in the oven at 450 degrees for 20 minutes. Okay, when I eat biscuits and gravy, I love to have cantaloupe. And right now, cantaloupes are coming into season and they're really good and sweet. So we are going to slice up a cantaloupe. I half it. Get me something to put the seeds in. Scrape it. You ever find a good cantaloupe? Save the seeds and let them dry. Plant them the next year. 
we just take our knife and go along the rind. Watch out, don't get your fingers at the end. Or you can turn it around and make it pretty. There's our cantaloupe for breakfast. Now all we're gonna do is step over here and make some gravy. Okay, so when I was growing up, Mama always made Crisco gravy, which is shortening. This is the kind of uh, shortening that most of the Southerners buy down here. It's a little more expensive than the store brand, but it is good. So you're always gonna use one part shortening to uh, flour, and I've already used a third cup. Put a third cup of flour in my sifter right here. So today I'm making a pretty big batch of gravy. So I'm gonna use a third cup of shortening. And while that melts, I'm gonna get some milk out. We're gonna use milk to make our gravy. Mama made milk gravy. And this is 2% milk. Let's see how much I got left in this. Three cups. Three cups of milk. Now I do have a recipe in my recipe book. You can add butter to your gravy and it's really good. But I'm not going to do that today, but you can always do that. Now you're gonna want your eye to be on a pretty high level. It's great to have a gravy whisk. If you don't have a gravy whisk, use a regular whisk. But try to use a whisk and not a spoon when you make a good gravy. All right, now we're gonna take our flour that's in our sifter and we're gonna sift about a third cup of flour into that third cup of shortening. We go ahead and add some pepper. I'm gonna add about a whole teaspoon and salt. And now we're going to mix the two up. And if you get the consistency right, it should just be kind of puffy, like you see right now. Now, you would never want to make gravy until this is brown. So you're going to let this sit here and brown till it's nice and toasty. And that cooks the flour and it gets rid of the raw taste of the flour. And it just makes a delicious gravy. Now, if you just got to have bacon grease or butter, go ahead and use it. And just substitute it for the shortening. And I do have a little bacon grease over here that I have saved, but I don't use bacon grease a lot to cook with, um, like a lot of people do, just because Mama didn't. And so I don't really um, like the taste quite as much. And once it starts to brown, it'll, it'll get brown pretty quick. But you really need to let it get toasty before you add your milk. All right, now once it starts getting brown like that, that's when you add your milk. When it's done, I'm just going to pour it right back in this uh, measuring cup. So now it's when you take your whisk and you really whisk it along the bottom so that your gravy doesn't turn out lumpy. And once it heats up, it'll thicken really fast. Now it's starting to thicken. It looks really good. So I'm gonna back y'all up and let y'all watch me pour it. This is salt butter, and this is Plugera 
I believe is the name of it. It's really good French butter. These are really big biscuits. Now, my biscuit cutter set that I have on my website, you can go to my website and get anything you see me cooking with, but it also has a really large one with it. So there's really no need to have it and the Pampered Chef one. Because if you get the set, you get all the sizes in one. I just don't have it right here with me because Chris had to get it from the house. We're still in the process of finalizing our move to St. Mary's. All right, we're going to make us a plate. All right, I'm going to make a plate. is really good with biscuits and gravy because the salt in the gravy pairing with the sweet of the cantaloupe is just delicious. All right, let's get a bite. Mm -mm -mm. That really hits my spot. Thanks for watching Color Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. <laughs>